Hi and welcome back to our series of talks which are about what you need to know about yourself before you go to the designer. Today we're going to have a chat about what I call optional living spaces. Now why am I calling them optional? It's because years ago we just had a lounge room. That was it. Everyone gathered in the lounge room. Everyone just coped with everyone else under their feet. Everything happened in the lounge room and or you may have grown up where, you know, come six o'clock, the news was on and nothing happened in the lounge room, um, except for the news. So the lounge rooms traditionally were the gathering point. Now we have all of these other optional rooms. And these optional rooms include, you know, some people have a lounge room and a living room. People will have a rumpus room. People will have a theatre room. People will have a snug. Now, with those... Rumpus, theatre, snug, they tend to have specific uses, whereas the lounge room is more of a multi-use space. So your rumpus room is traditionally where the kids go to make a mess and make noise. That is where, you know, as they're young kids, that's where the Lego gets to stay out on the carpet because the traffic through the lounge room is not going to stand on it if it's there because we all know that that just sucks and you know it's where the kids can put the puzzles out and while they're doing it quite often these days there's uh, some desks in the rumpus room so it becomes a cross rumpus room hangout study for um, younger people as these kids get older it's where they you know hang out with their mates and watch movies and you know lounges bean bags it's where they hang out to just talk and um, you know listen to music they they may play instruments and that's you know as the kids get older the instruments can go to the rumpus room occasionally you'll get a music room as well and that one's even more refined because it's just for the music um, but if you're going to have in instruments in what is a little bit more of a multi-purpose space how big are they what are they how many are they uh, do they need powering you know if you've got a baby grand please tell your designer and um do you want storage? How much storage? Rumpuses generally need storage. It's one of those spaces where quite often a linen press is put in the rumpus or a hallway. Um, but I personally think there's extra storage that needs to go into your rumpus room if you are going to have one. That is board games, sporting equipment quite often can go in a rumpus room um there's things like all your dvds you know if you've got you know if you if you've got your, your hard copy dvds they need to go in there game boys playstations all of that sort of stuff um i've been into people's houses where each of the people in their rumpus room have their own telly like if you're from a gaming family i've been into them where they've each got their own telly so that they can earphones on, beanbags, got their own telly. So the rumpus room is, it's again like the, the lounge living space, there's a lot happening in a rumpus room but it's much more entertainment and generally young people orientated. So you don't tend to often, you used to get the parents kicking the kids out occasionally because sometimes the better TVs in the rumpus room. These days that has morphed into the theatre room. So the parents have just gone, you know what, I still don't want to talk on that Lego. I'm going to have my own room and it's going to have the huge screen. I'm putting the chairs back, you know, I'm getting the, the wine or the beer on the table. Hence the development of the theatre room or the media room. Now, this room is specific for media. And it is, um, it's generally a room that can be darker, but we need to know stuff about you even in this room. Because even though these rooms traditionally will have a big telly or uh, one of those slide down screens, you know, they may have a projector, they may have, you know, DVDs, surround sound, you know, do you want surround sound? Tell your designer because that's got to go into the plan work that there's a surround sound system happening in the walls here. And what we need to know is how do you like to watch your movies do you want a really really big lounge where everyone just cuddles up in a bunch with big blankets and this is how you watch a movie do you want the individual seats a bit more like a movie theater you know do you want a bit more space so you're not even touching elbows with the person next to you you know do you want a complete zone out where each space has 
somewhere for your drink, somewhere for your food, you know, do you, do you want to charge your phone while you're watching a movie? Do you want to do all of this sort of stuff in your theatre space? So the, the theatre space, ideally, you want to tell your designer, if you've got a multi-purpose room and you're thinking, all right, rumpus, theatre, and I'll, I'll put an office in the corner, tell your designer the theatre and the media aspect because what ideally should happen is the walls of that room, ideally you want them sound insulated or sound checked so that the sound from that, the, the movie, isn't leaching out into the rest of the house. So tell your designer if you're going to put some sort of surround sound, you know, theatre capacity into any of your rooms and um, and it's specific to that room because then we will know that we need to get something happening to buffer that sound. So the next one we're going to quickly cover is the snug, which has been creeping in. I came across it about 10 years ago with some Scottish clients and they were going, oh, we want a snug, you know, um, and I'm going, what's a snug? And what it turned out to be is it's a, you know, the den, the study, the den, the Chesterfield, you get the idea, the bookcases. Now, that's not necessarily exactly what a snug is, but it, it gives you that sort of perspective that a snug is a place generally viewed as a smaller, cosier space. You know, it's somewhere where you tend to, you know, want to get the little bit of that, oh, getting all designer on you, a bit of that womb experience happening where it's it's cosy and you feel safe. You know, it's where you can have, you know, the one-to-one -one or the, the small group conversations. It's where you go to just retire from the world with a good book. You know, there can be fireplaces are quite quite common in a snug. Um, and or, or a beautiful heating source, one of those beautiful gas fires that, that looks like a fire. So the snug is really... In a way, it's the opposite of the theatre and media room, where in the theatre and media room, you're turning something on and it's coming at you and you're just sitting back and experiencing it. The snug is where it's about interaction and it's about, you know, nurture with self and those sorts of places. So you'll quite often find a lot of books uh, in the snug. You'll find, you know, that's where you get the blankets on the, these beautiful comfy couches and, you know, it's a, that real snuggling kind of space. So if you want a snug, if you want a space like this, what we need to know, how many books have you got? Now that goes for any space, wherever these bookcases are going to go. How many have you got? How much space do you need? You know, are you going to play some board games? Do you chess? What about chess? Years ago, I used to have this beautiful chess table with this hand cast chess set and things like that. I love a good game of chess. And so we actually needed a space that was possibly about six foot by six foot just for no actually it would have been bigger it would have been bigger than that a couple of meters by a couple of meters just for a couple of beautiful lounges beautiful chessboard which was permanently set up uh, because it was also a big coffee table that had room around it to put your drinks on and your, your tim tams and your coffee do you want this sort of capacity in your snug do you want things to be permanently left out do you want you know fireplace in your snug are oh, you going to keep half a dozen blankets in there to cuddle with you know you're going to need some storage for those possibly you know what do you want underfoot all of these spaces what do you want underfoot do you do you need you know um individual chairs do, do you want again a, a lounge that everyone just jumps on do you want a combination of both these are the sort of little things that you need to think about. A snug is a very specific space. And so it is something that a lot of people see as a luxury um, in terms of houses because they tend to go for all the functional areas first. You go for your living room, you go for your dining room, you go for your kitchen. If you've got kids, you go for a rumpus. The snug it can also be treated as a parent's retreat. That's another name for it as well, your parent's retreat. Where do you go to hide from the kids? And, you know, where do you go to to regenerate yourself? That's a space that is just yours. With those Lego blocks I mentioned, don't get to even enter the room. So that's a snug is also very much a parent's retreat in a way. And so with these living areas, with all of the rooms I've mentioned so far as well, 
consider how that interacts with the outside. So and I'm going to have a, a quick chat, even though I'm not going to talk about the outside of the house, I am going to have a quick chat about how the inside interacts with the outside in one of the other videos. So share this along, tag people. The next, what are we going to talk about next? We're going to have a quick talk about the laundry. Quick talk about the laundry next. It's not necessarily going to be a long one, but we'll talk about it next. We'll talk to you soon.